In the last couple of videos, we looked at the list builder wizard forms on GetResponse. In this video, let's look at list builder apps. And these are just quick forms that you can create and add on your site for various functionalities. Maybe you want an exit intent pop up when people try to leave the site, then the form will show up. You can create a sign up box. This is just a normal form. You can create a normal form that shakes. You can create a form for people to download anything. Maybe you're giving away a free ebook. You can just create this form so that when you add the link, they sign up and they will get whatever you're giving out for free. So for each of these forms on the list builder apps, you can click here to read more about them. So if you're not already on this page, the quickest way to get here would be to go into create, then click on create form and then you come into list builder apps. So when you click on that, you're going to have all these options. So if you don't know what any of these forms is, you can just click on the name there to see more about it, or you can start editing one right now. So if you click there, you see, it shows you the kind of form that it is. And you can also learn more about it. If you want a fixed bar and you don't know what it is, you can see that's what a fixed bar is and you can read more about it. So if you want to know anything about all these forms, just click on the name and that will show you something about the form. And if you want to edit one and start using it right now, then this is how you'll do it. You just click on use up now and you can edit the form. So let's do an example with download and exit pop-up. So let's start with exit pop-up and I will click to use the app now. That will give me the opportunity to edit my form as much as I want to. All right. So you can change the form name, give it something that you can recognize easily. As usual, every form on GetResponse must be connected to a list. So you can choose a different list. And do you want confirmed opt-in turned on? And do you want consent fields to be on? Once I'm done with this, I'm going to tell you about these consent fields. This is for you if you are marketing to people in the European zone. So if you're marketing to people who adhere to the strict guidelines of GDPR, then you have to turn this on and you're going to see how you can add the various consent fields on your form. If you're marketing to people in the EU, that is. And you can change the design here. This is how frequent it will be displayed to the same visitor when they come into your website. You can put it there to be always. And this means that every time they come in, they try to leave, it will be shown to them. This will probably be annoying. So let's just put it seven days. So if you want to edit anything here, just click on it and you can edit it. All right. Anything you want to edit, just click on it and you can edit it. You see, this doesn't have lots of features like the other one. This is just for quick forms that you can use for various specific tasks. Like if you want to change the color for this, you can come in here and you can give it a different color. And if you want to edit the text of this, just click and edit anything in there. If you want to change this, you can put different colors. You can change all these colors for the form. If you want to change the sizes and all, you can do that there. If you want to increase the size of the form, you can do that. And this one as well, the button, you can change the colors if you want to. And you can also change the hover color. This is a color that people are going to see when they hover over the form. If they put a cursor over the form. And this, you see, you can drag this one down. And you can drag this one down as well. Just, just click and drag an element. Maybe you don't want these elements to be like this. You can just drag it down and make it however you want the form to be. Okay. You can drag it down, drag that one up. So let's say that's it for our form and you can edit all this as well. Okay. Just double click in there and you can change that. So that's just a quick form for your exit pop-up. And 
What do we need to do now? We just need to save and publish. And once you save and publish, you see for this one, this is one that you have to put on your website. You can just click there to copy the form. And for this, for this one, let's use an example of WordPress. So I'm going to come back to my WordPress website. And then I will go to the dashboard. So first of all, I have to start with a caveat here. This video is beyond, is probably beyond your scope. If you don't know how to use WordPress and you don't know how to work with WordPress code. So you should probably get someone else to do this for you because it is an easy task. But if you don't know how to do it, you won't know what to do. So the first thing that is the number one rule of WordPress is you don't ever edit the WordPress the WordPress theme directly. What you need to do is you need to create a WordPress child theme. And you see you're even getting warning a warning here that you should never edit the WordPress theme directly. You should create a child theme. You should probably get someone else to do this for you. So let's say you want to add the code. Something like an exit intent pop-up. This is something that you probably want to add throughout your website. You want to add it on all the pages. So if somebody comes in and they try to leave the page, they will see the exit intent pop up and the way that you can add it on all pages is by adding it on something that appears on all pages and that is either in wordpress that will be either the footer or the header so let's look for header.php here or footer.php but normally things like this you should probably add them on the footer.php so the first way i'm going to show you how you can add it on the footer.php if we have it here and you can see here we have the theme footer so I can just click on that because that is the footer.php that we are looking for. And you can see there it's the footer.php. So as for this, I can just scroll all the way down, all the way down. And just, just before this, okay, I can add it before this. I will put this one in there. I will add the code that we've just taken from getResponse. In certain versions of WordPress, this functionality was removed and uh, you probably won't be able to edit your theme directly from here. So you will need to FTP into your server and add that code here. So if you know what that is, then you know it's easy. But if you don't know what it is, then you probably don't know what I mean by that. But first of all, try to add the code here. If you can't add it here, just do FTP into your server and then you can add it on your footer.php. All right. So once I do that, if I come into my website, so the first thing I want to do here, let me put this as always. And then I will publish again because I want to see the form every single time I try to leave the website. So you see, if I try to leave the website, it comes up for me. And if I refresh the page and let's see if it's still showing up. Okay, so it's probably because it's probably because I just made the change right now. But if I go on a different copy, if I go on a different browser, and I try to leave, once it loads, let it finish loading. If I try to lead, leave, it shows up. It shows up you see now this is because i've chosen to make it show always so you can see this could be annoying uh, for your visitors so you should probably make this to be a different day maybe you show it after seven days from the last time it was shown so let's say that you don't have the capability to go into your wordpress and find this code what are you going to do what you can do is you can go back into your sidebar widgets and we're going to add something there on the widgets. So let's see how we can add it on the widget. So I'll just come in here and I will go into widgets once again. And under widgets, I want to add, I want to add custom HTML. So this custom HTML, I will just add it. Let me, let me put it on the footer and let me just Paste in the code in there. This is a get response code. All right, where is the code? I have to copy the code once again from get response. And I'll come back into widgets. 
I will paste that in there and then I will save. And even if, if I reload, even though I remove the code from the footer.php, I should still be able to get my exit intent. intent. So let's go to a private browser, control shift P on Firefox, control V to paste. And then I will enter and let's see if it's going to show up for us here. Let it finish loading. And you see that it's showing up for us still. So even if you don't have the capability to go into the WordPress code, and you should probably not do that, especially if you're, you're not using a child theme. So just ensure that you're using a child theme on your WordPress website before you make any changes because any changes you make will be lost if you're not using a child theme. The next time you update that theme, all those changes will be lost. That's why people use child themes in WordPress. So I just wanted to show you that if you want to add any of these other forms, once you create them, you can do that as well. So let's do another form in the next video. And in the next video, we're going to do a download box. So I'm going to show you how you can add a download file. And then you're going to download, you're going to add this file for people to download on your website. You're going to add this form for people to download whatever it is on your site. So I will see you in the next video.